our first video here, our first real video in chapter three, I want to talk to you about working with nulls in your expressions. Okay, so uh, let's just kind of have a little bit of background here. Before we get started, we got to kind of define functions and how all this sort of fits together. All functions in SQL require parentheses around the arguments because all functions in SQL accept zero or more arguments. Now some functions will have optional arguments. Okay, so we'll we'll play around with these. And I've got a couple of uh, you know three or four or five different functions in this little example. Uh, take a look at a couple of these here. So like the get date function, for example, you have to have the parentheses, but it doesn't take any arguments. You would actually get a syntax error if you put something other than a space in between the parentheses. Now, just a reminder, SQL doesn't care about white space. So you can put as much white space, line breaks, tab characters as you want in between those parentheses for readability. Now the count over here has this as its argument. Don't worry, we're going to cover all of these functions. I'm not here to teach you what they do in their syntax right now. Just getting you comfortable with the idea of them. Now in this example, sorry to flash the screen like that, we have a nested function here. You see there is a the upper function accepts one argument, and that particular argument is now the left function, you see it's open and closing parentheses, which you see it accepts two parameters. Okay, so that's all. You know, again, don't beat yourself up if you don't know what all this stuff means. That's what we're here for. I can assume you understand what upper would probably do and what count and get date are, but we're going to cover them, okay? All right, now scalar functions in particular. The last screen was about every type of function in all of SQL. But let's now shift to kind of be granular here and just talk about scalar functions. A scalar function can be used anywhere an expression can be used. Now you remember what a scalar function was, right? It returned one value per row. We talked about that in the last video. A scalar function can be used anywhere an expression can be used. Okay? All clauses and with all operators. And as I showed you in the last page there with our example, you can nest them. That's what the upper and the left values are doing. Okay. So remember, one of the rules that we talked about in Chapter 1 when we discussed the relational model was that you can't have nested result sets, right? So this is the scalar function is not a nested result set. It's one value per row that it returns. Okay. Now, let's shift now. You kind of got a basic idea of what a function is, but you really need to see it to have it all click, I think. Chapter 2, we talked about dealing with nulls in our where clauses, in our predicates. Remember the is null operator? That returned true if the predicate evaluated to null. Is not null returned true if it evaluated to a non-null? Just a reminder, because we're actually going to see a function here in this video and over the next several videos that has a similar name. Notice that is null has a space. Okay, so there is a space right there in between is and null. Is null is an operator. It is used in a predicate to determine whether or not a uh, the predicate evaluates to null. Okay, that's going to be different. I'm, I'm just pointing that out. We don't have to go back into it and rehash all that. Now I want to shift. We dealt with nulls and predicates last chapter. Let's shift and talk about dealing with nulls in an expression. And just a reminder, we did talk a little bit about this. Remember the idea that the result of any expression between a null and a non-null returns null? Right? We did this little example. What is one plus an unknown number, <laughs> okay? This being our expression here inside the parens. And you know, I can kind of think of it like this. If I said, um, uh, like, uh, get my pen said right, uh, an unknown is a U and a K is an unknown. 
k with another k equals a k. A k plus a u, though, equals a u. Right? What's 1 plus an unknown number? A u plus a k equals a u. What's an unknown number plus 1? And what's an unknown plus an unknown equals an unknown? Just a, just a reminder. Okay? Nulls are tricky. Now, what I'm going to do just in this particular uh, video, let's just take a look at our sample data. We did this in Chapter 2, too. The, the key point here was the middle name column does allow nulls, and we had a couple of nulls in our set. So use those. And here's what you get as a request. Give me a list of all customers and put their entire name into one column. Right. Can you figure out how to do that? I mean, that's pretty simple, right? You're doing string concatenation. Take the first name, concatenate it with the space in the middle name, and concatenate. Okay, but here's the issue that we have. Um, here, let me change to blue. Blue probably shows up a little less harsh. Um, see, this is where knowing your database is critical. First name, required. Middle name, optional. And last name is required. See, knowing that database schema, knowing the metadata of the columns here is really, really important. Anytime you deal with uh, concatenation like this, you're going to have to know this kind of stuff. So really what we're going to end up with here, I'm going to switch back to red, is we have a known, an unknown, and a known. And so when we concatenate those, you know, we do have the chance that we could end up with an unknown value. And sure enough, if I go back one screen and look, you can realize, you know, here's a, a known, an unknown, and a known, and that's going to equal an unknown. Whereas up here, here's a known, a known, and a known would be a known value. Okay? All right, I, I feel like I'm probably browbeating you with this, but you can see that, you know, sure enough, that those that had null middle names did have null results. This important stuff, I'm sorry if I'm belaboring the point. I, I think it's really important, okay? And I talk too much sometimes. So. <laughs> now, back to this. So on the left side is our sample result set. Many times, though, you don't want to have that happen you actually want to ignore the unknowns and simply return the knowns. And that's what we're taking a look at over here. Instead of returning a null for Keith Harris and Janet Gates, uh, or sorry, Lucy Harrington here, we want to actually just skip the unknown portion of it, right? So we have to learn how to do that in an expression, right? That's, that's the idea, okay? Here are our three functions that we're going to use to handle nulls in our expressions. Now remember, where can an expression be used? This is an important thing. I just want to cover this and make sure everybody gets this before we go on. Where can I use an expression? In all clauses and with all operators. Right? SQL is, a, you, know, you could basically call it an expression-based language. So you can use these pretty much anywhere. Now this is also why I highlighted that is space null up there because you notice here that we have the is null function. There's no space right there. That's no space in between is and null. I know. Confusing? I know. Uh, a couple of other things that I highlight about on this page is you can see that is null is also T SQL specific. The others are the ISO standard. Now, what you can also do on these is you can group them. So you could say this top set up here, these guys both have the exact same definition. They convert a null into a known. And I'll show you in the next video. If that doesn't make sense, I'm, I'm going to spend, we're going to, we're going to know nulls. Trust me. Okay, so both is null and coalesce do the same thing. Now, there are going to be some differences, and that's the subject of the next couple of videos, is what those differences are, uh, because I think that particularly beginner to intermediate level SQL people can really shoot themselves in the foot with these two.
<laughs> really easily. Now, now the bottom one, I'll put it in its own group. Obviously, it's the outsider down here, and my pen is not tracking for some reason. Sorry about that. Null if is the opposite. Okay, so is null and coalesce. You pass in a null as an argument, and instead of returning a null, it returns a known. So you pass in an unknown, and out comes a known. Null if does the opposite. You pass in a known, you put in a predicate, and if it it meets the predicate, then it returns an unknown. Now, I know that's a that's a hard one to understand. Again, sometimes easier with examples, and that's really the uh, the next video here. So I'm going to stop all this lecture stuff, and let's go actually do some actual work.